be learned. This is an unprecedented fine. 250% of this company's turnover. It is also unprecedented that it's been uh, allowed to be paid over 10 years. But what it tells us is that corporate manslaughter is a very serious offence and will be met with very high fines. We wait to see what will happen if a larger company is prosecuted, but you can be assured that the fine will be millions of pounds if it is a large company. It is out of all proportion to the company's size and means. That is a threat to any SME that chooses to breach the law, cut corners and run risks. If there's a fatality, the reality is that any SME is likely to be wiped out if they are convicted of corporate manslaughter. Directors and senior managers must take this case, albeit it doesn't test the law seriously and ensure that its systems are robust. They were gone through very thoroughly. And their own obligations as senior managers must be scrutinized, because that is what was done in this case. And finally, don't forget, when you're responding to incidents, to have a last line of defense. Any safety management system that you have needs to have a documented, clearly defined incident response protocol. Protocol. You would have heard me talk about it and others about having privilege over accident investigation reports. This case, it wasn't a feature of this case, but there was a document that was created by Mr. Eaton shortly after the incident, before I was instructed, that was documenting the events. Now that document would not have been and was not legally privileged. It formed a part of the police investigation. Mr. Eaton was questioned on it by the police in an interview, um, but he stopped drafting it uh, midway through uh, because of the police arriving and uh, questioning him. So privilege, part of an accident incident response protocol, in this case, other cases may be different. Where does that leave us? Well, all I can say is the company has applied uh, for permission to appeal.